Hi, I'm Ben. Hi, I'm Ben. And we are Hi Jinx. Hi Jinx. No idea. Oh, I could hear the echo on yours after that. Say again. I could even hear my voice echo on yours after that. So really? you know. Well, you know, it's the joys of modern technology. Um, we're um doing a hijinks video for you via the medium of Skype from across the world. Um, Claire's in Auckland and I'm in London. Um, so we have managed to um, pair up gins that we both have in common across the world. And we are going to compare um, martinis, uh, make some beautiful martinis for um, the wonderful um, summer weather that we have in the UK and the wonderful weather that you guys have in um, New Zealand most of the time anyway. Um, it's a wintry 18 degrees. Exactly, right? Which is about as much more than it is here today. So, perfect. Um, I mean, I'm saying, right now it is the middle of the night, so it's not that warm, but, you know, yeah, it's probably 13. We're having a little play with Leaf Gin. Leaf Gin, which this is one of our collective favourites. And also, oh. so not one of our favourites, but a resounding favourite amongst all of our friends and family members and that sort of thing. Basically, everybody that we introduce, introduce to this gin, yeah. loves it. It's just such a crowd. We've dishes. never found somebody who doesn't like Leith Gin. No. If you find somebody that likes Leith Gin, let us know because we haven't found one yet. Yeah. It's because it's ginny enough to please a proper gin lover, but citrusy enough to please somebody who finds proper dry gin a little scary and wants something that tastes a little bit more like an orange. It's got that citral element that sort of um, pleases people on a warm summer's day. It's got the sweetness for the people that like that sort of slightly sweeter element, uh, but it's got enough juniper in it to have a satisfying sort of dry down as well to differentiate it, say, from a flavoured vodka. Um, you know, yeah. So it's an amazing middle ground, really, that they found here, these guys. Um, Very yeah, should we have a little, let's have a little um, neat taste to remind ourselves, <laughs> as if we need reminders. Crystal taste glass here. Yeah. Okay. Mm. It's like, it's, it's like baking spices on the nose. It tastes like somebody is making a batter for a really delicious lemon and poppy seed cake or something. Well, you've got nutmeg in there, of course, which... Um, is the um, sort of um, aromatic sweet spice in there that you would get from that. That's yep. got a bit of that recall in there as well. Um, Angelica, um, yeah, that's, 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 a sweet, that's a sweet end element to it. But it's also got that sort of citral zing that sort of makes it not cloying. Yeah. And so that's what makes yeah. it balance so well. And funnily enough, I think it's a while since I've had this neat mm. because this is such a beautiful tonic gin i think yeah. um and it's just amazing how much delicious sort of deep spice there is in there you mm. know it's very very satisfying it's a bit like I you know, know, it's a piece of cake right now it's a bit like the simpsons you know like as a kid you watch the simpsons and it's a cartoon and then you watch it again as an adult and you hear all the adult jokes and you go, oh my yeah. gosh, how did I ever watch it as a kid? And this is the same. You could take this gin however you want to. You could take it as a very simple, citral, crowd-pleasing gin. But if you want to sort yeah. of, um, you know, go further with it and really explore um, what it's got in it on your palate, there's a lot more going on as well. Yeah. Um, I think that's, I why... think that's what we're about to get in our martini as well. Because yeah. we've not done a martini with this before, have we? We've, we've done it with a tonic. And boy, especially, I've said about this one before, for Leith Gin and Tonic, the perfect garnish is a sea breeze. So basically, go to the coast and have a Leith Gin and Tonic. And like that is just perfect. You need a salty breeze in your face and then this lovely citral yeah. gin. But we're about to have an entirely different experience with it. Yeah. So let's do that. So I'm going to start, I'll try start with this, um, with this, um, little um noy that i've got going on here so i've got very standard widely available in the uk but french um marty um uh, vermouth which um is a kind of white wine based vermouth very very generic very beautiful very easy drinking i'm going to um swill it i'm going to rinse the glass and then pour it out so i've got a little yeah. coat 
I've got a coating in my glass of the Noipa, and I'm just going to pour in a shot of leaf into that. Do you, do you think we need anything to garnish? So, what I have learned about garnishing is that the new ideal for me, I've got, so I've got myself some tiny, teeny glasses because we're going to make a few videos and we don't want to get wasted. So what I have discovered is if you just now, I'm sure we, people will make loads of jokes about this, but if you just sort of rim the glass with a little bit of citrus, so literally yeah. just like right the rim of the glass with a citrus peel. I've got my orange, my orange, my orange. Um... It's too much of the citrus getting into the drink, yeah. but it just gives you a little hint when you're sipping it, you get that little bit of citrus oil from the side of the glass. So it's yeah. absolutely cool. Great. So I've done that with my orange. What citrus Hot did top. you use that, by the way, Claire? Um, very interestingly, I use a little bit of lime peel. I saw it was green. I thought it was green. Because I'm, yeah. I'm feeling a little wild. I'm feeling a little wild. I wanted to do something because what I've decided to do is I'm going to go with my read and read vermouth, which was sort of my big punchy vermouth, because I feel like having now... If I had only ever had the leaf in a tonic, I would have put it with a light of vermouth, but having just had it again neat, I feel like it's got so much character with the spices and everything. I want to pair it with the reed and reed. And yeah. the reed and reed already has, has grapefruit. The leaf has got orange. I kind of feel like what I want to go with all of that earthy spice and all the savory spices in the reed and reed, I want sort of a slightly cleaner citrus than an orange but maybe not quite as far as a lemon. So I thought I'm going to go with a little lime. So you, that could was my... you could go grapefruit as well, couldn't you? I guess. You could go as well if you had one in the house. I which mean, I you know, we know my opinions on grapefruit. We've discussed this in previous videos. But um... basically, um, in New Zealand, we get our citrus from the garden. So yeah. we have lemons, limes, mandarins mm. and then so i like to use things this literally was grown on a tree just outside that way so what are you how how are you coping are you, are you okay it's horrific i mean we've got rosemary we've got sage thyme lemongrass all that sort of thing i've got now, loads what... away so you know that's great yeah pretty what, much what more could it's perfectly, you know, it's ideal. I'm, P.S., I am doing my, um, I'm doing my martini stirred over ice, and yeah. my measurements are one-sixth vermouth to gin. Hang on, what's that? One, one part vermouth to six parts gin is what Go I'm on, doing. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so instead I'm of just... I'm the reason I started doing this is I do love, I love the vermouth where you just sort of wet the glass. But what I noticed is that for a lightweight like me, stirring it over ice like this, it dilutes it very, very slightly and makes me die slightly less quickly. So that's basically... But then we, the can, we can compare and contrast the styles with what I've done, which is literally wet the glass rinse the vermouth, well not, um, pour the vermouth out. So I've literally got a coating on the glass and then pour a shot of gin inside. So we've got a very yeah. um, concentrate distilled. Um, yeah. See, there's mine. Um, See, I've got a beautiful, beautiful little mini teeny there. Yeah, exactly. They're just very, they're very different. Um, clink. Clink, cheers. Oh, wow. What it does is it lightens up the whole drink. It lifts away more of the sweetness as well. So you get more yeah. dry down in this one. I was going to say, and, yeah. Gives me a know, far like, more savory side of the leaf mm. profile. Like, mm. if you gave me a gin and tonic and then this, and you said it was the same gin, I wouldn't believe you. Correct. I'm getting more of the kind of um, angelica root, more of the coriander, you know, all of the kind of classic elements of a gin. Um, yeah. And yeah, less of the kind of sweet elements. So it's not to say one's better than the other. It just, it shows how versatile a drink can be. 
because you know yeah. it can it can literally show show different faces um by a different um by a different mediums can't it and this is a very different yeah. face to it being either neat or as we've explored before in, in a very kind of um cleansing uh, very satisfying thirst quenching gin and tonic on a summer's day mm. so say you were you know as we are all year round leaf fans maybe this is the this is the way to drink it in those slightly cooler months of the year when you know you want something that's going to warm the cockles yeah yeah because i'm still i'm getting i'm getting the citrus i'm getting the sweet orange in the gas mm. and mm. on the top all, yes and much more background it's sort of um because of the the nature of the vermouth that i've chosen to go with it but it's like a really savory herbaceous drink now and i'm massively into it it's and i think that if you wanted actually now now that i've made this into a martini i'd be like you could if I had made a full martini, I would consider putting an orange twist in there, mm. just if you wanted to bring back some of the orange. But it's definitely there in my sinuses. One last it's thing really I'm going to do, um, because I found one of the things that when I started drinking um, leaf that um, we hadn't really explored, and leaf hadn't really explored before, was um, the idea of using pink peppercorns in the gin and tonic. Yeah. And that's now my standard um, gin and tonic serve for a leaf is orange peel and pink peppercorns. So I've just got some here, um, just in this little um, pot, I don't know if you can see. Um, yeah. And I'm just gonna put in a couple yeah. and just see if that brings a slightly headier note to the um, to the whole thing, which I think it should. Um, yeah. Just crushed a couple in. Um, also, it looks quite pretty having that sort of pinkness in the glass, if that's your thing as well. Oh. Um, if you get just a couple in there, you won't end up swallowing whole pink peppercorns because um, that isn't always the dream. I kind of, I kind of like munching on the pink peppercorns, though. Mm, it's an acquired taste, though, isn't it? Yeah. And funnily enough, what that does is perhaps it's a memory recall for me, but that just elevates it back slightly towards, oddly, the um, sweeter element as well. So it just <laughs> opens out. It opens out the slightly citral note because, you know, orange and pink peppercorns are such a kind of happy bedfellow um yeah that maybe it just sort of opens out that side of the palace a little more um mm. and what that shows is one gin and i know we're like championing a gin that we both love but um one gin can be so versatile depending on the way you um the way you treat it really that's very yeah. exciting not not all gins have that level of versatility um yeah but this one does so i just don't really understand if you don't have a bottle of leaf gin um on your cabinet then to be honest you really should like yeah. for every situation so yeah you know it's kind yeah. of like the it's the ultimate gin isn't it because yeah you can and do also, so many things with it. and also you know people are spending a lot of money on bottles of gin it's getting very trendy to spend 40 plus pounds on a bottle of gin um and do that but this is 29.95 as well now what can you buy for 29.95 in the gin market you know yeah it's really it's really difficult so for that i mean this is way ahead of um most of the gins in at that price point i would have said um just by dint as yeah. i say of, it, of its deliciousness and its versatility yeah it's such good quality it's just it's absolutely delicious and i challenge anyone out there to find someone who doesn't like it because if you neither do. of us if you do send us a, send us a note in the comments or what have you let us know that you yeah. didn't like leaf gin because i doubt you will find somebody and if you do love it also tell us um get on their website um order it and serve it however you want because you are not going to find a bad way to drink this drink yeah um, i'm gonna say cheers cheers cheers